David Rosales from Huntington Beach, California, uh, and uh, I'm an Americana artist and uh, singer-songwriter, dad, surfer, uh, kind of all-around adventurer, and uh, yeah, so that's what I do. Okay, so I'm always going to ask this question because anytime when someone mentions Americana uh, music, they all have different opinions. What does Americana music mean to you? What does it mean? So I think it's the great umbrella term. I think it's like when you don't quite know, you're not completely country, you're not completely blues, you're not completely like bluegrass or uh, a number of different roots um, music, basically that come that came from the U.S. American folk, all this kind of stuff. When you don't quite fit so you know square into that into that nice little um, you know uh, uh, hole. <laughs> you know they uh i think that americana is kind of the catch-all term you know because i take a little bit of everything and so i i think that uh you get a lot of varying music across the spectrum and uh whether it's i kind of break the spectrum down into like country over here and blues r&b over here you know so and then you have rock in the middle you know folk all that kind of stuff, bluegrass, and it all spans out from, you know, it's all kind of, but I, I feel like the tent poles are like country and R&B blues and then everything in between, so. Ooh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. I'm curious, um, with that being said, uh, you mentioned kind of like rock being somewhere in the middle. What would be like, uh, I guess to say like the metal rock or the, the harder version? Because it wouldn't fit so much in the rhythm uh, with R&B. And it yeah. with well, me I mean, country wise. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of like um, I don't know, you know, somebody like, for instance, like Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats, right? So they take a lot of that soul blues R and B, but then they also got a rock component to it. Um, they have some steel on on some of their stuff, so they take a little bit of the country flair, you know, but it's not they're not country. Um, but they lean more kind of in that middle rock to like R and B blues area, I think. Yeah. That side of the spectrum. Um, on this album, I, you know, this album that I have coming out in, uh, in July called Revive, um, we went more in that R&B blues spectrum side, you know, where I was listening to a lot of like Sam Cooke and Al Green and, and Memphis Horns. And, you know, so we got kind of those influences, whereas before my last album, it was a lot of um, the country kind of influence where it wasn't specifically country. I'm not from Nashville. And, you know, I'm not any of that. Um, <laughs> But I definitely have, you know, a roots um, country flair to my voice. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, anyways, <laughs> I, I, I'm on a tangent already. Oh, but. no, you're good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, honestly, it's one of my favorite things to let the artist talk about everything because tangents are so much fun to get into. Um, yeah. With that being mine, you mentioned a few artists in in the mindset, which happens to, for me, be like, what I was thinking about when I was listening to your brand new song, which is out now. Um, yeah. Let's get into Spoonful. Yeah. Let's get into it. Let's All dig right. in. Yes. Big, our big bite of spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel a lot of dad jokes coming on on this one. <laughs> oh, I'm, I am a, I am a walking dad joke. I feel like I just, uh, I love corny cheese ball stuff. Uh, I'm just all about it. I, I think it's fun. It keeps life interesting. And, you know, it's life is too serious to take. Um, life is too serious and, and you got to just kind of make things a little bit more fun, you know? Exactly. I feel like there's always a quota for me to do at least a couple dad jokes a week. If Love I don't it. hit that, if I don't hit that quota, I'm like, ah, oh, has my week I've gotten so really? bad. I don't even know I'm doing dad jokes. I'm just kind of being me. And I don't, I'm like, and somebody's like, you know, like my good buddy who produced the album with me and this song spoonful uh good buddy i go surfing with him all the time and he's my touring drummer mike wilson he's like man that was such a dad joke and i'm like i don't even know what i'm doing <laughs> what i'm saying i'm not like intentionally doing dad jokes it's just kind of my humor and the way i kind of go about things so i mean technically you do already have the certification of a dad joke you are a father, yeah so I, i'm definitely you know 10 years in there so yeah so well congrats on that thank um, you but back to the mean thing yes uh yes <laughs> yes your new song spoonful is out let's talk a little bit about it what is spoonful uh spoonful is um a song that i was actually uh 
going to give up on uh, some years ago as a songwriter. Uh, I've said it before, but you live as a solo songwriter, you live in your head. I don't have a band to really bounce things off of. Once I get it to a, a, a really nice structure and I know exactly what we're going to do, then I bring it into the band. I go like, here, we're going to, you know, suss it up a bit more and we're going to, you know, get it going. But when it's in that formulation process, I like to sit with things by myself and in this place that I call my sugar shack here. Um, it's uh, got a good vibe in here, good creativeness. And uh, I just kind of just work things out in my head. And with doing that, um, you're by yourself. And so you don't really know if you get stuck, writer's block or something like that. And you don't know if you should be seeing a song out or see not seeing a song out. I Generally, I believe in seeing everything out because you never know if one song is going to lead you to the you know, if one crap song that you write, you know, it's horrible, but you keep on writing it because you don't know if it's going to lead you to the next best song that you've, that you've never written yet, you know? Yeah. Um, so I believe in the process, but, but uh, Spoonful was one of those where I kind of got stuck and, and uh, I was fortunate that um, at that time um, I went over to my, my buddy, Matt Costa, who's a fellow singer songwriter. He lives down, down the way in, in Laguna. He did at the time. And uh, went up with, with, you know, a case of beers and I was showing him some other music. And he said, what, what, what else do you have? And I said, well, I got this song. I don't, it wasn't called Spoonful at the time. I don't remember what it was called. Um, I had really a couple, I had like the first verse of it. The whole structure was the same. I had the melodies, but I didn't, I was really stuck on the lyrics. And, um, you know, the, uh, the verse was coming really easy, but you know how it goes right now getting high on life high all sunday with a spoonful of love i think i had at the time it was like getting high on life high on something um da 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 you know <laughs> it was like you know so you're singing these things and phrases and you know kind of like the rhythm of how it's gonna go and i'm singing that and matt goes well that's great man let's let's uh, let's jam on that for a second so he goes to his piano and matt's a fantastic uh you know, he's like a wizard, uh, with music. I mean, the guy is so talented. And, um, so he went at his piano, he's taken it to all these different places. I mean, it's going to like, you know, to Pluto and beyond, you know, and Matt, that's, that's the way Matt works. He's like, let's go from, let's go out there, you know? And so he didn't, you know, we, we just kind of, uh, jammed on it for a while and just drinking some Modellos and hanging out and laughing, you know, it was a beautiful kind of, you know, afternoon. I don't remember what season it was at that time. It's in California. It's usually we have one season. It's called nice. And that's pretty much it. But <laughs> nice um, and rain, you know, <laughs> ni ni nice and sunny, you know, and uh, and so we uh, we jammed on it and that inspired me. Um, you know, he threw out some lines and stuff like that. And so definitely got to give some props to my buddy, Matt, for um, who's on tour right now, I think, with Seawolf um, and uh yeah, I just I just spoke to him or texted with him the other day, um, showing, sending him the video, and he was like, "Man, the production is great. This is so cool. I love it." And um, so I think um, that song was definitely uh, one of those ones that didn't write itself. You know, it it was mostly formulated, yeah. but it needed some help, good kick in the ass type of a thing. And Matt definitely provided that for me. And I went home, finished it out, and you know got it going and it was uh i'm i'm so glad i did because it's def it's one of my favorite songs to play live it just feels good every time i play it and um that doesn't often happen with a song that takes a little bit of effort to write usually it's the ones that write themselves those feel great to play every time uh have a couple of those i'm fortunate in that respect but um this was kind of like you know the the troublesome child you know but uh, made good at the end <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah Honestly, it's such an adorable song. Um, without like, if you didn't, if you didn't watch the music video, it's like, um, yeah, it's such a great song. It feels like I would be watching this at like a rom com movie, um, <laughs> right? You know, like as like things are getting up and really like a great moment in life for this character, and you just feel you feel loved in a weird in a in a yeah. weird comforting way. And I think the brass horns are probably like what like helped punch it's it. Some warmth, yeah, yeah. There's we can dive totally into that. So yeah, yeah. Let's. So let's. this song took took many different forms. There's like me, my my uh, guitar and my vocal, 
and this is the song those are the nuts and bolts of it right yeah and then you kind of uh you go into production for the album and you go okay well what's the sound now and i have the beauty of, of having that where i have a many i have a band called uh, my band of scoundrels and so they're a collective of my friends and fellow musicians in the area and uh, i can draw on a lot of different kinds of people and kind of get any color that i'm thinking about um and uh, i love I think in terms of color and visual. So this was definitely one of those like, hey, I'm hearing horns here. I'm, I'm seeing these colors come out, you know, let's let's get there. And Mike, who I'd mentioned before, Mike Wilson, who co-produced the album with me um, during many times on the road, him touring with me in, in the water surfing, we talked about the vibe and what we needed from the album overall. And I just said, you know, I really, I'm feeling horns. I'm really listening to a lot of R&B and soul from like the 60s. And I'm just, I want to get this vibe and I want people to feel good. Um, I want people to dance. I'm like, if they, if they feel good and they want, they want to dance, they're going to come back to another show, you know, and they feel like they want to come see it. You know, people like to be around positivity. People like um, there's enough negativity in the world. And what's the point of putting some more out there? So I'm yeah. like, let's, let's do this. And, uh, you know, wrote, uh, Brought, brought it in for production, got the horns together, got the colors that we wanted, everything flowed. It was great. Um, once you have this song, now I'm going like, okay, what we have here? Okay, we're kind of deciding what singles are right for the album. You know, we cited that four singles and uh, these are the ones that my friends and, you know, people that I, I showed the album to um, before it was mixed or mastered really. Uh, this is what they were gravitating towards. And, um, you know, these are the ones that I'm feeling like, fit you know and yeah. um spoonful was one of those and my good friend zach zombeck who's a um he's been a collaborator of mine on the visual end in um in my music videos for for a while zach was man i met zach when he was like in high school and we did this song called key to my heart um a long time ago um and uh and then we did um, on the last album we did good to be alive he also did my turn it around video that came out on this album was the first single um but i was like i knew zach was like i'm very like hey man i got a vibe i got a thing this is what i'm seeing i'm very like hands-on about things and this song i was like zach i don't know what it's about really like well i know what it's about but i don't know visually like what i want to do with it in a music video and he's like i have some ideas and I'm like, cool, let, why don't you just take this and run with it? I'm just going to let you have it. It's your art piece. So he did completely. And, uh, and he made this beautiful uh, mixed media show piece that basically uh, took him about a year to do because he did all of the modeling, all the claymation. I mean, he's learning as he's doing it because he really wanted to get into this this world which is a completely different world so he watched a ton of pixar movies he just you know found like okay what are the storylines that really work you know and um we decided early on that we would kind of base the character spoon on a uh, forky you know and um it kind of had this vibe and we were like well you know and then i've always loved like the brave little toaster and that whole yeah um you know uh finding your way back home in, in a cute way. And I'm like, let's just do this. This is completely something completely different than I've ever done in my life. Um, let's have fun with this, you know, just create a, you know, a piece of art and uh, it may fall flat, flat on its face or it may go really well. I don't know, but here you go. And he, he just did a hell of a job and um, really stoked on how it turned out. We just did a shoot yesterday um, in a studio with all the different, claymation pieces i'm looking at them like the caterpillar that's playing the guitar solo i'm like this is what the caterpillar was right. blows my mind the stuff that he was able to create i mean it's just like wow like blew my mind yeah, yeah. so i loved oh gosh um so i had the opportunity to watch the music video way too much it's adorable and i've been showing it oh, off thanks. to co-workers and i'm so yeah. glad you my one of my co-workers literally mentioned about sporky in the music video and she's like did he take influence on that? So I'm like, all right, that's a good question. I should go ask him that. And you yeah. said it before I even got the chance to. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right, that question's out of the window and already on the plate. Um, but yeah, I mean, Zach sent me this whole, I don't even know if I mentioned, you know, uh, Forky or whatever to him. Um, but then he sent me, um, 
he sent me like a story. He was all super professional about it. He's like, sent me like this uh, storyboard. He sent me um, a color board, you know, thing that, that they do. And we're releasing all this stuff soon. Um, Cause I always love the behind the scenes. And for this, it's really something that is so creative and such a process. And, um, but so he sent it to me and I'm like, wow, Spoon's like, Spoon's so lovable. I'm like, he's just like, you just like, he's you want him to find his home <laughs> it's very cute you know it's very thing and uh i mean i'm just i'm so stoked on it and i you know i i'm stoked that anybody it, it kind of crosses age barriers because like you know my uh my in-laws and stuff that are older they they checked it out um you know little kids are checking it out and um and then just normal grown-ups are checking it out and everybody's you know relating to it or at least thinks it's it's a really cool piece because it is like a wow like whoa this is crazy um somebody was like uh, i sent it to a, a friend of mine and she's like yeah my husband said that he should have smoked a bowl before it <laughs> you know, and i'm like absolutely yeah there is some some disney pixar level stuff that's going to go right over the kids heads in there that we specifically wanted to put in i i, I uh, definitely added my two cents on some of those kind of little um you know kind of easter egg things that uh kind of like the like, uh, gosh what was it the like trash bag scene yeah where he yeah he ate something and then he pops out I oh think yeah it was like a little plastic i think it was a paper heart that he yeah, eats and he it pops was a paper, out. paper square heart that's very yes. uh and he started tripping out you know one might say so um yeah but that was all a spoonful of love and uh yeah it's got a good message and and um it's uh it puts a smile on your face so i like that yeah it's, it's such an adorable music video and i'm surprised it's not blowing up at the moment and because it's such yeah, yeah. a cute video yeah. um i give it time though it's yeah give it some up. time you know give it some time give it some love yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, this music video is super adorable. I love the concept of it. Um, I am curious, because uh, you meant uh, because this came out on a Pacific day. Um, was this intentionally oh, yeah. plan on? Was this intentionally planned to be on Earth Day? So the song is not specifically. Um, it's about a number of different things. Uh, the, the song itself, um, but. Um, it's it's kind of about the song pulls you can take it wherever you want to go with it i'm not going to ruin it for anybody yeah. really but it's just about fostering a love or fostering something and um and helping it to grow so if you want to take environmental from that if you want to take relationship love if you want to take any multitude of things from that you can um but the music video was specifically uh we wanted to talk about single use a plastic and the issue that that's creating um around the world you know i surf there's a ton of plastic on the beach a lot of times especially after a, a storm you know we just had we just had a rain down here and that <laughs> washed washed a lot of uh you know the stuff from la and inland uh down to the beach here and uh you know it litters it litters it up and these you know this is the same place that i'm surfing that my kids are surfing um you know, there's a lot of issue with, uh, you know, out there in the Pacific where all the currents kind of get together and it's like, it's just plastic just sitting out there in the water, you know, and uh, so I wanted to really kind of um, take that issue head on uh, and, and talk about it a bit, you know, and we wanted to talk about that. It was a whole issue of, you know, him being thrown away and then being recovered and being reused, recycled. And, um, and I, and I feel like that's for a lot of these things, uh, a lot of those environmental issues that could be solved with just being a bit smarter with how we're using plastic. I'm not saying get rid of it altogether. I'm just saying, just think about how you're using it. I think about how we're, um, uh, you know, use, use stuff a couple times, you know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. uh, you know, don't throw stuff away needlessly. And, um, you know, a little bit goes a long way because if everybody does a little bit, it adds up. Right. And it adds up negatively as well. So if everybody's throwing away plastic stuff and littering and doing all this stuff, it adds up. Um, so yeah, we wanted to do something with that, with the music video. So we released it on earth day. I, I thought that, that would be a good, um, good spot for it. Um, and, and it might get, uh, the message across even further, you know, so 
<laughs> so um, I like the idea of, gosh, I like the, of the idea of um, being an advocate towards uh, recycling and I love the, the inspiration behind it. Um, with that being said, um, gosh, I had a train of thought and I lost it. Oh my gosh. The train is, train is pulling up to the station right now. <laughs> And it's realizing the passenger forgot its bag. So uh, right. they're just wa- it's just waiting. <laughs> it's just waiting. It's like all aboard. <laughs> uh, you're going on. Uh, same yeah. time now. Do you want yeah. us to like weed a little bit? But right, uh, right. yeah, so we were just talking about this, the, the video and where it was going, the, the environment. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much that's pretty much I, it. Yeah. So with with all that being said, um, now I'm getting my train of thought back up and running. Hello. Um, with that being said, so you got the music video out now and, yep. and the new song's out. Your album, which is coming out soon, Revive. Yeah. I'm curious to know what was the inspiration of the name itself, because this is the second album, right? Yeah, this is my second album, full length album. First one was Brave Ones, and that came out in 2018. Um, we were all set. Th- this album was recorded the week before California lockdown. So um, it was it was two weeks we were in the studio, California lockdown on March 13th, maybe, of 2020. Um, kids were sent home with their school books and told like, hey, we don't know when we're gonna come back, you know? So, um, <clears throat> but I remember that because my wife was like, hey, uh, you might wanna go to uh, the grocery store because, uh, you know, uh, people are talking about things not being available. So I went and I'm like, this is crazy. I'm par- pushing my cart through and I'm like, there's no more chicken. Like there's no more stuff. Like people are like throwing hoarding and stuff like that. And oh, I'm wow. like, maybe I need chicken. Maybe I need all this stuff. So I started <laughs> piling it up too. You know, it was a group mentality thing. I'm like, Oh my God, what's going on? And then we locked down, but we had big plans for this album to come out that year in 2020. So it's been something that we've been sitting on for, uh, you know, a couple of years now. So I'm, I'm so excited for it to come out. We were just waiting for the right time. Um, cause I wanted to tour properly under it. And, uh, and you know, I was doing, so we locked down right in 2020. And then I just, I live in a, a pretty kind of suburban area here in Huntington beach. And I started playing, I took my, you know, my little PA rig outside and I was playing like wine happy hour for my, uh, neighbors and such. Um, and, you know, it was great. I just didn't want to drink alone. I was tired of watching Netflix in the house for like a week, you know, with my <laughs> wife and our kids and stuff. And I was like, let's get out and drink with people. So we don't seem like alcoholics. And, um, so we went outside and everybody loved it. And, uh, and I said, well, you know, until I go back on tour, I'll keep playing every Friday night, you know? And, and since everybody's digging it and it got to be the point where I was playing every Friday night for the next three months in my neighborhood. And we had like 500 people coming onto our street and like, just, it was so crazy and kids were bicycling and people were in their little groups. And some people were, had their chalk outlines of where their group was, or people would pull up their, you know, long bed trucks and, you know, sit and, and watch. And it was a cool thing because there was nothing else going on. And literally that was like, what kind of got us through and kept my chops up and kept me motivated to, you know, and I also got to suss out these songs live because I would play them, you know, so I've been playing them for like two years now. So they're, they're pretty good now live, but um, yeah. And uh, I was just talking about this album, this album that's going to come out, you know, when things get better and, you know, things would open up and then they would close down again and open up and (laughs) close down and you're like, Whoa, what's going on. But I feel like things are coming back around. We're, we're living with it. And uh, you know, uh, you know all the big guys are now like hey we're touring this is when we're going so little guys like myself were like yeah this is great too let's tour um but i it, the overall sense and i probably live in a bubble here in you know southern california um where it's like we have nice weather we were just talking about 75 80 degree weather here sunny so yeah. we have the fortunate um ability of being outside a lot of times um all you know four seasons that we have here (laughs) and um you know so it's different but i'm looking forward to getting around the country and and spreading this around but so anyways we were like yeah let's uh, let's release it this year let's get all you know the 
the machine up and back and running and, um, you know, got the, got the PR firm, booking agency, everything's just working and, uh, you know, everybody's stoked on it. Um, going to be doing some touring, all that kind of good stuff. But where the name actually come came from was, uh, it, it's so funny. Like <sighs> it's the old adage as a musician, when you need a band name, you never have one, but when you don't have, a, when you don't need a band name, you've got a million that you're writing down, yes. you know, you're like, Oh, this one's the greatest, you know, this is the perfect one. This is, you know, but when you're like, <laughs> okay, guys, we need a band name. You're like, nobody has. <laughs> and you're like, I have a few of those. Out like, <laughs> yeah. You know, or you go back to your list and you're like, okay, well, this was cool at this. You know, I, I wrote down all these when we didn't need one. And you know, what do you think about these? But same thing with album titles. It's like, you're trying to encapsulate and, and say what this is, you know, what is this piece? And for me, I, I wrote and sequenced, you know, one through 12, the, the, the album to be on vinyl. So it's got a side A and it's got a side B and it's very distinct and it tells a whole story um, of what this is. Yeah. So it's got a very distinct, like, um, like side A, side B, um, different colorings on both sides where the, you know, the first side of the album is very light and, and it has a bunch of the singles on it. Um, it's got that very kind of like um, brighter sense to it. So if you've seen the album cover, the album covers like a bunch of like oranges and blues and stuff like that. Right. So it's kind of yeah. like almost a sunset ish. Um, and, uh, and so the first side's like more oranges and stuff like that. Second side's more blues orientated R and B. And that's got a bit more of the blues type of thing, literally. And um, so, so it's real cool. I'm excited for people to like hear the full album, but when we came time to kind of name it and go like what is this you know you're coming up with names and i'm you know I'm, I'm bouncing them off my buddy mike he's kind of like my wall and um you know we'd be surfing and in, in the lineup and stuff i'd be like what do you think about like it's all about love and he's like sounds like a high school name <laughs> i'm like i'm like okay and so we're like you know just trying to riff back and forth we're texting each other and, and then he's like He's like, man, it's always stuck out to me. And I never noticed, I've never told you this, but there's a line in, there's a song on the album on the second side called Wine Country. And, uh, and so there's a song or a line on there that says, uh, revive and soothe your soul. And he's like, revive, that just always stuck out to me. And I was like, yeah, man. He's like, and it's bold. It just, you know, and I'm like, yeah, man. And we're coming back up. Everything's reviving. I'm like, it's just truth. It's like hundred percent truth. And um, it's just where we are. You know, we've just gone through this really dark period, you know, where it's one of those periods where everybody's going to be like, yeah, there's things pre pandemic. Hey, this is the way that things were. And then there are things that are like after, you know, yeah. that, um, you know, you're going to refer to time as such, you know, like pre pandemic and post pandemic, right. Things were this way and things are now this way. And, um, but the idea that we're all coming back, rising from the ashes, coming back up, I think that's a, a powerful statement to make. And I think that's something that people everywhere can relate to. And overall, this music makes you feel happy and kind of up and like, uh, everything's moving the right direction and grooving. And, um, it's all about, you know, strange times need good vibes, you know? So that's something yeah. I would say a lot, you know, during the, the pandemic and stuff like that, when I was playing those what I call driveway hops and stuff like that. It'd be like strange times need good vibes. And this is what, what I'm doing, you know? And, uh, but yeah, revive came from that song wine country. And, and my buddy just pointed it out to me. Sometimes need a little help, a little kick in the ass. And, and uh, it's always nice to have a, a circle of people that you trust. Um, you know, I don't want to say like with your life, but like with, with, you know, with uh, giving them the, they'll, they'll tell you how it is and how it is truthfully, you know, they're, they're the ones that are honest and they'll tell you if an idea is horrible <laughs> or, or, Hey, you know, that's a great idea. Um, you know, or something like that. But I, I think that it's important to have those, those types of people in your life. And, um, the co-producer on this album, my buddy, Mike Wilson is definitely one of those people for me. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I, love, I love the concept of revive being a great album name. I mean, it, we're, currently in the whole revival of 
you know, the beginning of a Life. new period. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so right. you con- yeah. honestly, I think that's also probably the best way to describe Americano music too. Yeah. That it's just a revival of reuniting passion and music all together. Um, with that being said, mm-hmm. I do, we, I mentioned this probably before, oh, we mentioned it before the uh, interview, but I do want to talk about your, uh, your sugar shack. I want to know the concept oh. behind it. Um, Cause you mentioned um, it and. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of like this, uh, this kind of cool, you know, spot that, you know, just kind of has my books up there. I, I come in here and I read, I'm a big reader, um, you know, of horror fiction and uh, a lot of other classic kind of stuff um you know it's got all my you know there's stuff there this whole shelving is all my gear this whole side is all gear so it's not pretty looking but it's it's all you know guitars and amps and um, touring stuff but yeah I needed a space basically I had all this stuff in my son's room and uh, my son is six and um he needed his own space and uh you know I was like well we got to do something so we built this shack out here on the side of the house and um but it's got a good vibe out here and i love coming out here you know to um just just kind of have my it's kind of like a like a man cave in a way (laughs) like like, i mean technically it qualifies as a she shed but yeah it's yeah i mean well well i like you know i'm a big color you know i like decorating i like doing stuff i got a definitely a, a a vibe and uh, so I, you know, I kind of created this stuff that would make me feel inspired. And um, I put up, you know, these things, these lanterns and all this kind of stuff. And um, so it's, you know, it's got the, you know, Persian rug in here type of thing. It's, it's got a good kind of bohemian hippie vibe that I like and, uh, you know, makes me feel good and inspired to create. So, yeah, this is a place that I, I write a lot now and um, I do a lot of work and uh, just escape you know, the madness of, of, uh, the family sometimes, and they escape me to come in here too. So, cause I am pretty, pretty intense and crazy and, you know, like to, uh, you know, be dad. So <laughs> you know. very understandable. But, um, yeah. you know, with that in mind, um, uh, as new artists are looking up, uh, looking towards new artists for inspiration, um, when it comes yeah. to kind of creating your own space, what would yeah. be like the best form of advice to, um help that person kind of create that space like your sugar shack (laughs) yeah I think I think you know just be true to yourself um I like quiet um I get distracted super easy so I've always written in a very quiet space Um, when I was in college like I couldn't um I had to go into the library because it was very quiet it was the only place I could study really because uh everything else distracts me so um for me to really hunker down and think and and be alone with my thoughts I like um just quiet and and um not a whole lot going on you know um like there's no electrical out here in in the shack so it's not like I have tvs and all this kind of stuff you know I mean I could pull (laughs) electrical out here sometimes I do for the amps and stuff but um yeah I think just just kind of creating your own spot that you feel comfortable with in creation you know because it's uh you got to really get inside of yourself when you're creating and yeah. um, but also have fun with it. So bright colors make it fun for me, you know, and I can look up and away from, you know, my pad of paper, you know, the phone or something like that. And I can look up and see bright yellow staring me in the face. And that automatically makes me feel a certain way. You know, colors are crazy like that. So I think some color um, is always nice and quiet, color and quiet. So you've mentioned color quite a few times. Um, yeah. Now I've spoken to another artist who has the ability to see color when okay. she when she talks to people or when she's lis- uh, listening to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious to know if you also tend to see color in terms of music or um, certain, I guess, conversations. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I think you know there's there's what we're conditioned for and in, in i i don't know other parts of the world but in the u.s you know traditionally like blue is sad you know black is like dark the absence of color is like dark and maybe angry you know that's why a lot of like 
you know, metal bands and that kind of stuff, black t-shirts, you know, I don't know. It's harder. It's tougher. Um, <laughs> red is passionate, you know, um, green is soothing. Um, you know, there's all these types of things that you're conditioned to when you're going through our public school system. Um, you know, and you can tell like just, just color and all those stuff around me is just super important to me. But, um, do I, does, you know, when I talk to people, does it make me feel a, a color? Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I exactly like, I'm well, talking like in- to you and going like, you know what, I'm feeling black right now, or I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling uh, magenta, you know, because I, you know, or I'm, I'm looking at you and you're just all magenta. Like, that's what, yes, that's the life. halo around your head, you know, that's what it is, or your violet. Um, I don't know, but I, I definitely hear music in terms of color things make you feel a certain way and it's funny um i don't know how to quite i guess um uh describe it but music hearing hearing something definitely a piece of music or something like that definitely creates some sort of color when you close your eyes and when you when you're imagining things and you're thinking about things um you know, you feel certain ways, certain moods. Um, I don't, yeah. And when I'm writing, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing colors, you know, like this is more of like this kind of a color, you know, I feel like I need to get this. And it's also almost like, Hey, I need to pull in a trombone and a trumpet, and this is going to provide this color. And it's a very abstract idea if you don't create music and you're not really thinking in these terms, because it's very difficult to, understand what that even is you know I don't even quite grasp what it is but I just know it when I'm writing that like hey I need this color over here what you need actual color no I need I need like uh you know Rhodes piano part right there that's going to provide that color you know it's it's an abstract that's the only I guess it's the only way I could describe it's it's pretty freaking abstract to think about music and forms of color but it it makes sense to musicians. It does make sense. So it like, makes and me- it's across, it's across, like everybody feels that way pretty much musician wise. Um, they think in colors and such too. You Gosh, know? Um, my best example um, someone's told me is the uh, scene from Ratatouille where he's combining okay. the cheese and the uh, strawberry <laughs> together and eating yeah. both of them together. And you can see the colors of how crazy the combination would taste yeah I can vibe with that yeah definitely I mean just life experience just mixing things together um, I think that's probably the only way that our human brain can um, describe what we're feeling is through color I think there's a lot of stuff that you can't describe it's just it's uh, it's just feeling and it's just and you're searching for it and I think as a songwriter that's what you're often trying to do you're taking these um normal everyday things you're taking notice of things and you're writing them down and you're trying to describe them in a way that's going to be um creative and interesting um that normal people would just go you know they're looking at um let's say i don't know um a spoon for instance (laughs) you know they're right they're looking at a spoon and they're going like, that's just a spoon. But, you know, some people can see the spoon with a story and see this whole thing, you know, uh, happening at the same time. And, um, you know, whether you're a musician or even comedians really do it well. I mean, they see normal everyday things and they make comedy out of like our just normal lives. I think comedy is like yeah. the hardest medium out there because you have to literally elicit an emotional response from somebody whereas if you go to a show and you're like oh that's cool that's a cool song you know you can kind of fake clap or you can kind of do whatever but like when somebody laughs when you make somebody laugh as a comedian um that's that's an amazing thing i mean you're you're physically making somebody do something you know um and uh anyways i digress but i think color is very important for all creative uh creative creators (laughs) (laughs) no i like i love the response because when as you're talking about it oh as you were talking about the the progress of making spoonful 
you mentioned, it kept mentioning colors. I was like, oh, I'm curious to know um, in terms of that. Cause like I mentioned earlier, there was another artist who has a, okay. um, uh, it's not a condition. It's like um, Pharrell Williams is another person who has this mm-hmm. ability to be able to see, uh, to see colors. So when I heard you talk about it, I'm like, oh, I wonder if he has it too. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know I how just, to pronounce it. It's not gonna. Uh, I will try, and it will be horrible, and we'll end it like that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, awesome. Well, uh, normally, you know what? Um, I normally have these little conversation cards, but I'm gonna kind of cut some of them short. Um, sure. If you, we can go quick. We can go quick. We can go quick. Them if you right. like, yeah. Okay. So, um, so, uh, some of them are like more like. Um, meaningful questions uh, sure. once, but I'm going to go find the sillier ones because those are so much fun. And since the music video is very fun and yeah. the song's very fun, I want to go towards the fun route. Just not the, no, I didn't want to go that one. So we'll start with the first one. Um, what would be a boring superpower that would make uh, make you the envy of your peers? A boring superpower? Yes. I mean, I just think that um, uh you know, the, just the idea of running fast or flying, they're just kind of like, okay, cool. You can fly, you know, in the superhero <laughs> world, you know, yeah. like in the Marvel universe, it's like pretty much anybody can fly, but then they also do something else. That's cool. But I think, I think there's something with flying, uh, to be able to do that. You do it in your dreams all the time, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I think that that's envious, but it's a boring superpower because I think pretty much every superhero kind of has that ability i mean or at least they can jump really high and it seems like they're flying basically you know so i think flying would be would be pretty cool but boring for for like the superhero world so yeah i like that answer because it does feel like if everybody has flying it just it's like okay well cool but can you well you can fly yeah can you (laughs) can you make pizza out of midair with all the toppings i want Right. I mean, like, you know, or can you stop time, you know, or, you know, do all those things. I've watched all those Marvel Universe movies and stuff like that with my kids. And it's just, uh, it is wild trip. Oh, gosh, it it is. Totally engulfs you. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And you're talking to someone who's a huge Spider-Man fan. So I... The third we're just movie. watching uh we're watching um the one where they're in europe that's the one we're watching oh, okay. right now. so away from home away from that's home it. that's one we're yeah. in the middle of right now so okay so you yeah. have you seen the new the newest one no we haven't seen the newest one we watched the old, i can't the, spoil anything yeah. to you all right no 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 spoilers <laughs> okay if anything um the meme that you think that's going to happen does happen okay that's the only type of spoiler i can at least give you Okay. Fair if enough. You know what the meme I'm referring to. I, th- I think I do. <laughs> I'm not sure. Now I'm trying my hardest not to describe it, but um, no, I no, that's that's yeah. cool. Totally. All right. What what do you got for me next? Okay. Okay. So, um, what is the lesson that took you the longest to unlearn? To unlearn? Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, that's a great question. The lesson to unlearn like trying to wrap my head around that, that question in general. Um, So the lesson that I learned, then I've unlearned. Um, I think uh, the lesson is, you know, um, speak less and listen more, you know? Um, And that's a tough lesson (laughs) to to just (laughs) digest in general, because I'm a very uh, talkative person and uh, you know, and uh, so I, I tend to, uh, I think that's answering your question, right? Because I've, I've yeah. tend to, uh, uh, I've unlearned that multiple times where I've talked too much. So, yeah. Mm, that's a good answer. And it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually one of my favorite uh, Teddy Roosevelt quotes. Yeah. I just met a guy the other day who um, is actually, <laughs> I was surfing and we were shooting something. I'm always surfing, right? But we were surfing over here real quick. I was with my buddy Mike. I'm usually with him. And uh a guy who's also doing some filming and his buddy. And he's like, Hey, I don't think I've ever met you before. And I'm like, Oh yeah, hey man, how's it going? And he's like, I can't remember what his name was, but I remember that he said, Um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm related to Teddy Roosevelt. I'm like, you should just lead with that thing, man. Like, yes. just be like, I'm Teddy Roosevelt's, you know, fourth great grandson. And here's, here's a Teddy Roosevelt line, you know, or something like that. And uh, it was so wild, though. Anyways, I digress. Let's move on. <laughs> I know. If we're going to go there, um, my father's Taekwondo trainer uh, was a Power Ranger. And he used to talk about that all the time to any sure. person, no matter who. As you, as you should. I mean, you're a pow, pow, <laughs> Power Ranger, you know. Oh, my gosh. So. I used to watch that constantly. Yeah, yeah. He would go to restaurants and he'd be like, oh, yeah, it's just another day in paradise. Oh, um, I know Taekwondo from a Power Ranger. And they'll be like, OK, well. What would you like Which to one? drink? <laughs> Which one is he? He's, um, the, he's the yellow one. You know? Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, he was a bl- red ranger? Sure. I think I'll he was a red it. ranger from the original. Uh the first Weren't they all masked? Didn't they ma- like I, they I was take a power them ranger. Off. Oh, they did? Oh. <laughs> yes. I think he was a red ranger. I'm not 100 percent sure. I do know that's the same ranger that taught Taylor Lautner from like the Twilight series and all the other okay. stuff that he's currently in now. But um that's like the one information I do have in terms of like. That's, that's ooh, pretty cool. cool. Here, um, let's see. What would be the most embarrassing thing that you ever Googled? Oh, yeah, I Google. It's it's crazy because the kids ask me all the time, right? <laughs> hey, Daddy, what's this or what's this? And I'm like, I don't know. Let's Google it. So I'm I'm never one to kind of, uh, you know, like lie to my kids if I don't know something because I want to yeah. know too. I'm super curious about things. So um man i don't i don't know it was just uh just anything dealing with like kid stuff i can't even like think about what what it was but but most things that uh kids come up with you know like um i don't know embarrassing um i don't know there's some pretty embarrassing things that the kids ask sometimes and you're just like yeah let's google that see what happens you know (laughs) or something (laughs) But, I, you know, I can't specifically remember, like, what it is, but I definitely Google a lot of stuff. I'd have to look at my Google history, which I can't right now, but. Yeah. Um, it's a little hard. Yeah. Here, we'll yeah. do. Okay, so we're going to do one last one, and it would be, okay. I'm going to change it because this one has it set to a different word. Um, what would the acronym for SPOON be for you? So we're going to mm. go SPOON instead of SPOON yeah, bowl. S, S, so so what is the acronym right s-p-o-o-n is that what we're yes. doing okay uh Let's super see if I can come up one. super positive the o's are hard <laughs> super <know>. positive <laughs> um um Ooh, is super hard. positive orange um <laughs> oblivious super positive orange oblivious nail biter i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't I'm know you're trying to think i'm like um, i don't know you gotta give me some time so yeah that yeah. i you know when i got this question pulled out of my like cards of a bunch of well, you're coming up with card. some great questions like what like i'm getting stumped here i'm like i i don't know i have no idea that's not uh, i'm thinking i'm like think about that one i'm kind of glancing going uh because i can see the word spoon on here and i can be like look at the words too so i'm thinking like um songs positively out there i'm adding an extra word in there um yeah make sure like a graph wise i'm out there um optional nudity optional nudity well i mean that's perfect actually i think you nailed it because spoon isn't wearing any clothes so true there you oh go my gosh. Bravo to you. <laughs> and with that being said um Let's close it out <laughs> spoonful is out right now the music video is out um your tour is coming out uh, yep, tour is yep. coming out soon yeah we're tour is coming soon we're going to be hitting uh, a lot of the south southern region uh, of the u.s and western region and then we're going to get to uh, the eastern and midwest um coming up here in the fall so lots Perfect. of lots of tour dates coming up and um a lot of good stuff a lot of good music coming out We've got some great music videos i mean it's it's a really exciting time because this we've been building up all this content and 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 stuff to just release and i love releasing music because a little scary 
um, but amazing at the same time because this music has been mine for so long and now it's going to be yours and you guys can do with it what, whatever you'd like and it becomes part of your life hopefully and um, you know it's always really cool when it means something um, to you and um, and you kind of take ownership over it you know like we do with songs you know like <clears throat> you know um, I don't know uh, you know <laughs> songs like and like welcome to the jungle or something like that from guns and roses yeah, like that's your, your like you think song. about things it's like your theme song you know or like yeah. you know your your thing you know that you your go-to uh, song you, you go to yeah so make it yours so yeah so with that being said where can we be able to find you you can find me at davidrosalesmusic.com you can find me david rosales pretty much any your favorite streaming service um and uh yeah davidrosalesmusic.com is probably the the best spot where you can google me um david right. rosales and i'll come right up so yeah as long as that's not going to be the next embarrassing google question yeah because <laughs> at that point we should all be knowing who you are and we didn't right, need right. to google you in the first place yeah exactly <laughs> very cool <laughs>